Hello everyone, welcome once again to In Conversation with Haritosh. I am so excited and this to be honest is our second attempt. Hoping everything goes fine and there is no network issues. Uh, I am so excited to have my next guest which I have been following probably for last few months on Facebook. I have seen him in LinkedIn and, and he's also written a book called Story Selling. So it's my pleasure and honor to have Philip Hum in the show. Philip, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So I know you have donned different hats at different point of time and I've gone through your intro, but I would love from you to hear what has been your journey like and uh, how did you come into storytelling? Mm -hmm. Sure. So from a background, I used to work as a consultant back then at being company and already during that time, I always felt like, man, um, I, I'm good at analytically, but somehow I just get so nervous when I present. And I always pushed it out because I didn't have any time. But then during my MBA, which I did in New York, I had some time and I thought, hey, let me look into this. So I started taking some uh, improv classes, some acting classes, some stand up comedy class, and at one point also storytelling. And what I quickly realized, hey, I'm not that terrible at that. I'm actually, I'm, I'm quite okay at this. And I, over the years, I learned a lot of very cool techniques that I started teaching others. And so that's pretty much how I started with storytelling. Um, pretty much born through a lack where I felt always I'm very bad at that. But at one mm -hmm. point discovering that actually it's, uh, I, I know how to tell a good story. Awesome. Awesome. So if I talk to you, what kind of people do you coach nowadays? I know you are, you are a TEDx speaker and and you now it's your kind of full time job. I won't say a job, but full time passion to do storytelling. So, what kind of people that you work with? Mm -hmm. I'd say three main groups: one, leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and salespeople. Because all of them, um, well, everyone needs to have storytelling in their life because everyone sells their ideas. But especially these groups, they uh, they need to influence, motivate, inspire others even more than other groups. Awesome, awesome. So my next question to is, which is where you said about three groups. So what is your definition or you know, how do you define storytelling? And then if you want to go further and talk about storytelling from the perspective of leaders, entrepreneurs and salespeople, how would you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a story in its simplest form is just something interesting happening to a specific person and usually not a company. And now when we take leaders or salespeople, entrepreneurs is using that story to influence a certain event. So influence a certain sales event, maybe making that sale um, to motivate your employees or maybe to get this funding from investors. So it's always then used stories strategically to get a certain thing done. What are some of, uh, you know, some of the biggest myth or, you know, when you go out there in the market, when you talk about storytelling, being a storytelling coach myself, I know when I when I go and talk to people, people think the storytelling is only for the Lala Bays and for the kids storytelling. So what have been your experience of coming up with some weird myths that people have when it comes to storytelling? <clears throat> yeah, one myth that is around storytelling is that it takes time. And that's completely wrong in the business setting a story shouldn't take longer than one or two minutes. Sure, if you're the CEO of the company and you want to motivate everyone, maybe it can take longer. But usually most business stories are between one and two minutes long. So don't think that you have to block an entire meeting just to share your story. That That's incredible. And, and absolutely, I can see that people think that you have to have that 18 minute TEDx or, or seven minutes big speech for a storytelling. Actually, yeah, the, the shortest story could be a few seconds and that can have a large impact awesome so on that note um, i'm gonna ask you that uh, can you share one of the stories that has a profound impact on you mm -hmm. yeah um i can share one that i just read a few weeks back and i loved it and i think it's pretty cool um that story is from nordstrom which is the clothing no the retailer in the united states and um so i'm gonna share that story in 1979, uh, Craig Trounce was working as a store associate in the Nordstrom in Fairbank, Alaska. And on that one day, he saw something very particular. There was this man rolling in his tires into the store. A little bit confused, he walked up to him and he asked, uh, excuse me, sir, can I help you? And the man said, well, yeah, I wanted to return the tires. And Craig said, um, 
Sir, you know that we don't sell any tires. We're a clothing retailer. And the man said, no, no, that's the exact building where I bought these tires. It turned out that the man had bought the tires from the previous tenant of that same building. At first, Craig didn't know what to do, right? Confused, he thought, oh, what, what should I do with that guy? But then he decided to do what felt right. He called the local tire agency to get an estimate of the price because obviously he had no clue. He then took the tires and gave a refund. He gave a refund for a product that Nordstrom didn't even have. Now, that just shows what it truly means to put the customer first. That's incredible and, and totally relate. I can see how this story can be used for salespeople, for leaders and for entrepreneurs. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Pleasure. Now, now let me ask you about um, how can somebody who's just got interested or just want to know about storytelling, how can that person get started? Mm -hmm. There's one place where you can always get started. Let me first share what I did wrong at the beginning. What I did wrong, I started and I thought always, let me have that perfect story ready. Let me craft this beautiful story that will wow everyone. Everyone will just praise me for how beautiful it is. That's the wrong way to start it. The better way to start it, even if you're a completely beginner, is to start sharing small stories. Every day we get the opportunity to share a small story. When? When someone asks you, how are you? Every day we're being asked that one question, right? How are you? These are the moments where you can share a story. Instead of just saying, well, uh, yeah, good. Um, beautiful weather today in Amsterdam. You share a tiny story of what has happened today, right? Something that shows a little bit more about you as a person. Um, let me think, what happened today? If someone were to ask me today, Philip, how are you? I'd respond like this, I'd say, uh, you know what? Some really cool happened this morning. A friend shared this better access for this YouTube creator course. And I've watched this for like two hours and it's blown my mind. I just can't wait to try out all the techniques there. Um, anyway, that's about me. Um, when was the last time that, I don't know, you um, looked into a new hobby and how was that for you? No need to respond here. But see, when someone asks you, how are you? You have the option to share a short story. And right now the story was completely off the cuff, right? I improvised on the spot. Could it be better if I planned it? For sure. But it's not about that. It's just about starting to share something about yourself. Awesome, awesome. I, I love that. So, because yes, I, I feel that a lot of people, first of all, they don't understand the significance. But once they understand the significance, they feel like, oh, I, do, I don't have enough stories. Uh, I don't know how to get started. I don't have that big budget movies, stories to say. Uh, but absolutely, you can start with having one to one conversation or in your team meeting. When you start off the meeting, why not start with a small story of what happened last week or last weekend? And, and, and I've seen that. I've tried that. And I, it really brings up the charm in the whole meeting. And you, you feel like yeah, I'm doing really good sure awesome so uh, the next question comes is uh, the importance of I'm let me let me put it in this way I'm gonna ask you a few things and I want to take your op opinion what do you prefer do you prefer structure or do you prefer impromptu story mm -hmm. I follow a structure almost all the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that being said I follow a structure so that I can then play with that. So recommendation to everyone starting off, start getting familiar with a structure. It doesn't have to be the perfect one, but just stick to one, get very familiar with that. And from there, you can always uh, play a little bit with that. But it's key to become familiar with one at the beginning. Awesome. And the second part is emotions versus eloquence. Which one do you prefer? Mm, I'm not eloquent at all so <laughs> i would then go into emotions for me when i was young i always tried to be more eloquent right F speak more intellectual but what i realized first i'm not that person and second that just creates a distance between you and your audience mm. so if you really want to connect with your audience you got to br bring it down you got to speak like a fifth grader you got to almost channel your inner trump by the way, I'm by no means endorsing him in any way. <laughs> but just tone down your language because then your story just lands better. Love that, love that. And I am absolutely the same. 
i recently published uh, reels on my uh, instagram which says that a lot of people when they are speaking they are not actually speaking the speaking language they are actually speaking the written language so they'll start using the three line or four line or 30 second long sentence and by the end of the sentence people will worried what exactly you talking about i forgot the first part so if we just start using simple sentences something which is as you said five grader seven grader high schoolers can understand i think it would be much much better awesome mm-hmm. so uh, the next question for you is uh, if you have where to recommend a few books on storytelling maximum 3 books what would you recommend mm-hmm. okay for personal storytelling i'd recommend matthew dick's book story worthy that's great if you want to share stories on stage mm. um for that it is beautiful second book i'd recommend is um what was it called The Story Theater Method by Doug Stevenson. That book is a great book if you're more into the theater type of storytelling. So you tell this beautiful story, but you already bring in a lot of elements of acting. Mm-hmm. And then the third book, obviously, if you are into sales, my book, The Story Selling Method, which helps you to share stories in any customer-facing role. Absolutely, and I was you actually segued me to the next question. which is about i know you wrote a book and it became amazing number one best seller so tell us more about the book you read, wrote which is story selling mm-hmm. yeah um that book is really about how to tell beautiful stories in any customer facing role so to build trust to stand out and at the end to boost sales and now why did i write it i just felt that a lot of the books that i've consumed before they made it very hard They made it very much like Hollywood type of storytelling. So, yeah, sure, here's the hero's journey. And I felt that these stories, these big stories, they're perfect for stage storytelling, but not good for these casual situations in business or in sales. So, I I wrote that book to help that. So, how can you share these tiny tiny stories still to build a connection with anyone? Let's say uh, somebody who's a sales person and um... who understand the importance of storytelling and is is you know that i have a sales presentation in a in a coming week and he come reaches out to you that philip give me one or two tips that can help me get better or maybe get more conversion what would be the tip that you would give let's start by analyzing okay who do i have in front of me at that next meeting mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. understanding who's your, who's your audience and making already some guesses about what could be their problems And so once you have an understanding of who your audience is and what their their problems might be then you can think hmm is there something from my background something from the previous projects that I've worked on that could be a relevant story here and then start thinking whether there's any experience and then start crafting already some of these experiences out there so already prepare that in advance sure maybe that story doesn't work out at the end because the person has completely different problems but it always helps to already anticipate what could be potential stories that you could bring in i love that perspective yes knowing whether it's storytelling or public speaking communication knowing your audience is so so essential because if you do not know who you're going to speak to uh, maybe you will speak something that you're not supposed to and that can result to a lot of things that you don't want to so absolutely agree to that do your research find out who you're going to speak to and what could be their potential challenges and how you can bring up your stories to that awesome so uh, philip if somebody is interested to work with you or learn more about you how can they reach out to you mm-hmm. um i say check out my website it's powerofstorytelling.com power hyphen off hyphen storytelling.com i know it's a little bit longer um or just ping me on linkedin so philip 1l2p hum h u m m and then happy to answer any re- any questions that people might have and yeah they would be delighted to be connected with anyone that is interested in hearing more about storytelling awesome thank you so much philip so what is your message for last message before we complete this interview for anyone who is watching this and who you think should know about storytelling Okay. Yeah. Storytelling is a skill, right? It's not this natural talent that just people have. But by having worked now with hundreds or even I think thousands of people by now, I know for a fact that 
it is a skill that can be learned like anything else. So just go for it, take some reps, make these messy reps, and by it, that way you will improve very quickly on storytelling. Awesome. Thank you so much. So as you said, storytelling is a learnable skill, which means that anybody can learn. So thank you so much. It was an honor and pleasure to have you in my show. I'm really looking forward to future conversation. And for my audience here, this is Fizzly Pham and this is Coach Arito Srivastava. If you want to know more about it, subscribe to the channel, find out about a podcast. And as I say every time, until next time, keep learning, keep growing and keep going out of your comfort zone. This is Coach Arito Srivastava. I'll see you with another guest, another show. Take care, stay safe.